I arrived in Abkhazia less than 24 hours after Russia became the first country in the world to recognize its independence as a sovereign state. In the capital, Sukhumi, the party had already begun. Abkhazians had been waiting for this moment since they broke away from neighboring Georgia in 1992 during a bloody separatist war which saw more than half the population flee in terror. But as Abkhazians celebrate, few in the West share their enthusiasm. Alarmed by what many see is the start of a new Cold War over this strategic crossroads. Russia wanted this war in a long time. Russia has been preparing for this war and Russia started this war. And Russia now is directly telling all its neighbors that it will be using you know, force in order to ensure its national interest. In other words, it is trying to restore its lost empire. At a new Sukumi restaurant on a converted pier, patrons can now enjoy a special view as they dine. Russia's Black Sea Fleet. In exchange for security guarantees to Abkhazia, Moscow has acquired a strategic new port. It's a move that's raised alarm in the West, but the president of Abkhazia seems comfortable with their new role as a NATO buffer zone. Вот мы за то, что были мы буферной зоной и сохранили свой народ, свой этнос, свой язык, свою культуру, свою самобытность, так же как и любая другая страна в этом мире. Abkhazia's parliament even held a special session to pay tribute to Russia and its years of support during crippling sanctions. Когда здесь с голоду умирали люди, когда мы детей не могли лечить, нам не разрешали лекарства завозить сюда в Абхазию. Только Россия оказывала Абхазии гуманитарную помощь, и только благодаря России мы выжили. И сегодня ее обвинять в каких-то амбициях имперских, то это, ну, я хочу слово такое подобрать, чтобы не оскорбить, не обидеть людей. Это кощунство, понимаете как. Поздравить вас, всех нас, с этим историческим моментом. Even as his supporters were celebrating in the streets, Abkhazia's president, Sergei Bagapsh, was bemoaning the West's lack of support for his country's independence. They should understand that to fight in the Western Caucasus is impossible. We have only in the last 15 years, we and the Ossetians, the Western Ossetians, fought with Gruzia six times. But this should be done, right? So I think that the международное сообщество это люди много повидавшие на своем веку и много знающие поэтому они для себя сделают вывод один чтобы положить конец этому противостоянию необходимо признание instead western nations have roundly condemned russia's recognition of abkhazia It's very upsetting when you are a pawn to some ge geopolitical games. As the director of one of Abkhazia's most respected humanitarian NGOs, Liana Kvachelia has been working hard to restore order in this largely unrecognized state which is claimed by Georgia. I think it is, it's very unfortunate that uh, there has been so much focus on Georgian-Russian relations and there was so little focus about Georgian uh, Abkhazian uh, relations and why nobody really was interested in why we don't think it's safe for us to live in a Georgian state. Abkhazians have been living under the threat of a full scale Georgian invasion for years. And their president believes the recent attacks ordered by Georgia's president Mikhail Saakashvili had the backing of a greater power. Правда в том, что Саакашвили никогда 
не полез бы ни на Абхазию, ни на Южную Осетию, если не получил бы добро из Вашингтона. Это 100%. Поэтому первое, то, что они полезли в согласие США, это однозначно, это я знаю. И у меня материалов очень много, и у нас материалов, где фотографии есть, где верхняя часть Эгодорского ущелья, инструктора американские обучают грузинских спецназовцев взрывному делу. Прямо фотографии, которые они фотографировали, там бросили это все. From ancient times, the Kadori Gorge has been a treasured and strategically important part of Abkhazia. But since 1993, it has been under Georgian control, giving them a vantage point from which they could stage an attack. And according to Abkhazia's deputy defense minister, that's exactly what the Georgians were planning to do. Это был один из плацдармов, откуда планировалось в будущем при проведении войсковой операции, что с этой территории на остальную часть Абхазии просочатся подразделения вооруженных сил Грузии. И они, плани, ими планировалось захват значит, Сухумского аэропорта вот, и перекрыть вот эту реку Кадор. Major General Gary Kupalba says Abkhazia had proof and prior warning of the Georgian plans. And so, within days of Georgia's assault on South Ossetia, the Abkhazian military seized the chance to reclaim the Kadori Gorge. With the approval of the Abkhaz army, I am the first journalist given permission to visit the Kadori Gorge since it was recaptured. Travelling by army helicopter, I've been provided with an armed escort and a military spokesman to guide me around. The Abkhaz are keen to show me what the Georgians were up to in the Kadori Gorge. Грузия в на протяжении многих лет вооружается очень интенсивно западными странами, такими как Соединенные Штаты Америки, Израиль и так далее. Вот и как бы лишнее доказательство этому вы видите здесь. We are in the village of Ajara, and my guide, the Abkhaz Army's press officer, Dima wanted to show me evidence of the Georgian military build-up here, a weapons stockpile which he claims was ignored by observers from the United Nations. Как известно, как вы видите, мы находимся на на ООНовской базе, наблюдательный пост миссии Организации Объединенных Наций по наблюдению. Вот. И в нарушение всех соглашений грузинская сторона привезла вот эти крупнокалиберные гаубицы. Да, они находились здесь, они должны были следить за тем, чтобы эта зона была демилитаризованная, хотя, как вы видите, это все оружие, то, что вы видите, это все грузинское оружие, трофейное. With freedom to explore the area, I soon discover that there's plenty of evidence to support Abkhazia's suspicions about a planned invasion by Georgia, a plan that may have had the tacit approval of NATO. Now, the Abkhazian army wanted to point out to us these rations that they found here. Uh, they, they're marked NATO-approved rations. Uh, there's the Halo Trust here and Russian peacekeepers behind me. They've been going around picking up the weapons and uh, and blowing up uh, the explosives and uh, anything dangerous that they find. But what they're really concerned about is these, uh, the evidence, they say, that, uh, that NATO uh, personnel have been here, that perhaps there were American soldiers based here in the gorge before it was uh, captured by the Abkhazian army. What's up, Bayok? Why is this on English? Не на грузинском, не на каком-то. Все на английском языке. 
But Georgia's government prefers to sidestep questions about why it was stockpiling arms in the Kadori or who supplied them, instead pointing out that the Abkhazians and Russians attacked first. Only uh, weapons that the, were there were the weapons normally used by police for protecting civilians in this area. There were no plans of military action, attack, on any part of Abkhazia. When the Abkhazians get there and the Russians and they see Western supplied weapons because the Georgian army has been modernized by NATO countries. Um, they say, you, 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 you didn't notice them. Well, they did notice the fact there were weapons, but they simply didn't say what sort of weapons. Colonel Christopher Langton has served as both deputy head of the UN's mission in Abkhazia and as Britain's defense attache in Georgia, and is now a leading military analyst. He says the UN had noted the arms stockpile in the Kadori and reprimanded the Georgian government, but that observers didn't bother trying to identify the weapons' origins. So really, what sort of weapons is not especially relevant? Well, only if, only if you're pointing the finger at the West in its assistance to Georgia and the fact that Georgians abused that friendship by using weapons and equipment given to them for illegal purposes. Just a few kilometres down the road lies the village of Chikolta. Here, Georgia was executing a strange plan to undermine the Abkhaz authorities by establishing its own so-called government of Abkhazia and constructing this huge building to house them. Now, the Abkhaz soldiers who control the area laugh off the attempt as ludicrous. И в этом здании они сидели и распределялись всеми инфраструктурой власти. Они это их на они считали, что это государство абхазское. На этом маленьком клочке они создавали свою государство. И это будет смешно, да? Это очень смешно. Это как бы сказать государство в государстве. Это вообще не входит ни в какие рамки. A group of seven Georgian monks are the only residents left in Kadori Gorge. Locals were given just 30 minutes to leave before the Abkhaz army advanced, and Deputy Ambassador Badridze insists ethnic Georgians were the innocent victims of last month's hostilities. Anyone can have any suspicion, but the fact of life is that it was Russians and Abkhaz that invaded and attacked the ethnic Georgian enclave there and ethnically cleansed it. In fact, Badridze says Abkhazia played a pivotal role in a Russian effort to topple the Georgian government. Simultaneously, Russia invaded Georgia from Abkhazia as well. Russia completed the ethnic cleansing of Abkhazia uh, from Georgians and invaded deeply into Georgian territory in the western Georgia. So we, in fact, had a war on the two fronts. It was a planned war uh, designed and directed at the destruction of the Georgian statehood. In first immediate goal was a regime change. <laughs> In the Soviet era, Abkhazia was known as the Pearl of the Black Sea. Its tree-lined boulevards and Art Nouveau buildings became a summer resort for the Communist Party's elite. But ethnic tensions had been simmering here ever since the Georgian-born communist leader, Joseph Stalin, had Abkhazia's political elite executed and handed the territory over to Georgia. Years of widespread Georgian settlement soon followed. But when the USSR collapsed, decades of festering ethnic hatred boiled over. We are standing now at a place where we used to have the Institute of uh, Abkhazian History, Culture and Literature. And uh, this place was burnt down by Georgian soldiers during the fighting in 1992. Of all the conflicts triggered by the collapse of the Soviet Union, the battle for Abkhazia was the most fierce.
When Abkhazians sought to throw off their Georgian rulers in 1992, the descent into chaos was almost immediate. I think that was an attempt to, to destroy our culture and to erase the, the, the memory, the, the, any historic evidence about our identity and about the fact that we've been living here for centuries. Liana wants to show me around Sukumi's old parliament. This bombed and blackened building bore the brunt of Georgian anger over the 1992 Abkhazian plan to secede. The MPs were literally sitting in the building of the parliament when the Georgian bombs started to drop on their heads. Mm -hmm. also in other countries. For Liana and many other Abkhazians, the assault on the capital Sukhumi was Georgian nationalism out of control. But they're not the only breakaway province to face Georgia's wrath. There was a terrible feeling of deja vu for the Abkhazians last month when Georgia attacked South Ossetia and its capital, Skinvali. We were absolutely shocked to watch how Skinval was bombed on the night from the 7th of August to, to, to the 8th of August. We were horrified to see that nobody really interfered in those uh, fatal 14 hours to stop uh, Georgia, the Georgian side from bombing Sienval. And uh, even before the Russian troops were introduced, there was a security council. And uh, it was absolutely shocking that uh, the American representatives didn't want to support a resolution that would call on both Georgia and South Society to stop hostilities. Это город Скинвал, город, который ночью 8 августа начала бомбить грузинская армия, чтобы уничтожить, чтобы стереть его с лица земли. Очень трудно, порой невозможно передать словами то, что я увидел и то, что я услышал в Осетии. Guram Akwab is the director of Abkhazia's only TV station. As news of the Georgian assault on South Ossetia broke, he and his team headed there to document the drama. Я никогда себе не мог представить, что кто-то сегодня в 21 веке может себе позволить открыть огонь против спящего города, против людей, которые спят. И э, десятки и сотни людей умерли ночью во сне, не поняв, что с ними произошло. The Abkhaz State TV portrayal of the carnage wrought by the Georgians is highly emotional and clearly one-sided. But it offers some heart-wrenching accounts of the South Ossetian civilians who were caught up in the bloodshed. Брал интервью у семьи, которая потеряла свою дочь. Снайпер снял 14-летнюю девочку. У матери на руках погибла, умерла дочь. Она долгое время несла ее на руках, тащила тело дочки. И вдруг чувствует, что силы пропадают у нее. Она оставила своего ребенка в лесу, в поле ночью, и с, др с другими тремя детьми убежала. The Georgian government says it deeply regrets the civilian casualties, but believes their deaths were inevitable. The Georgian army was forced to use artillery against the areas, parts of Tsin Valley, from where the artillery fire was coming from. The uh, damage and, in some cases, loss of life was probably inevitable, and that's extremely regrettable. And we also admit that the use of the multiple rocket uh, launchers was not necessarily the best way to uh, approach it, but we didn't have much choice. Debate rages over who attacked first in South Ossetia. 
current evidence indicates that the Georgian bombardment began nine hours before the Russians advanced through a mountain tunnel from North Ossetia. I remain you know, convinced that the Georgians um, attacked Skinvali before Russian units moved from North Ossetia into South Ossetia. But the Georgian action came after a series of incidents which shrewd observers of the Kremlin say may have been designed to provoke the Georgians into a war they couldn't win. I don't know if trap is the right word, but I would certainly say that a number of things had been going on uh, which would have definitely provoked Saakashvili into some kind of action at some time, and they did. Uh, so the provocation was deliberate. I'm in no doubt about that. As Georgia and other nations in the region move under the NATO umbrella, Colonel Langton says the West has simply ignored Russia's security concerns. The US and its partners did not understand uh, the strength of feeling in Russia when people were telling them about it for many, many years. Uh, and they ignored that. They ignored the sensitivity of Russia. And that was a huge mistake. Number in a sign that life might just be getting back to normal in Abkhazia, hundreds gather in the capital to witness this year's Miss Abkhazia contest. Abkhazians can enjoy this moment. For now, their future as a culture and a nation is assured. But they know the world is not behind them and resentment at the West's role in their recent history won't easily be forgotten. There is a lot of frustration here that uh, n nobody really cares for our strive to build a civilized democratic state. Everybody thinks that the Georgians deserve independence and freedom and have to be respected and, and have the right to become part of the international community, and you are not. It's, such a frustration that the rest of the world, the international community, is taking such a one-sided position.